Hello and welcome to Red and April Off Grid. Coming up, we'll be building and installing the front door on our son's Hyper Adobe Tiny Home and pouring the concrete slab in front of the door. Last time, we put in the base layer of the earthen floor, and while that is drying, we will be working on the front door. We've already got the door frame completed, and now we'll be making a custom fit front door for it. We will be rebuilding and reusing the temporary door that I built for our house while it was in construction. I've already ordered the threshold plate and the lower sill, everything I need for the door, and I'm checking those out here, making sure everything's going to fit before I get started. This door is just a little bigger than the opening on Kyle's home, so I'll need to trim it down. I started by taking the backboard off and cutting it to size. I can then use it as a pattern to make the frame fit it properly. The frame needed a little work as well. Some of the boards were a little warped and needed to be straightened out, so I used my hand planer for that. Making a front door seems like it should be a simple task. In a lot of ways it is, but it is precise or needs to be uh, pretty precision work. It needs to fit into the hole exactly, it needs to be square, and it needs to be uh, flat. It can't be warped. And so what I'm doing now is looking at the boards, making sure they're not warped so that once I put everything together the, the door won't be warped, and making sure that it ends up exactly the right size. Now that I have the frame pieces cut, I'm starting to reassemble. I'm attaching the frame pieces to themselves and also to the backboard, and I'm using glue to clamp them together to get a really secure connection. I don't want to rely just on the glue though, so I'm also using cabinet screws, which have a nice wide flat head to secure that backboard to the frame. Once the glue was dry, I flipped it over and cut out the opening for the window, and now I'm working on the opening for the pet door. Kyle has a cat currently and has considered getting a dog in the future, and so we put in the biggest pet door that would fit in the door underneath the window. The OSB sheeting will be on the inside of the door, and for the outside sheeting we're going to be using a piece of hardboard. So I'm bringing that over now and getting ready to cut it out. I was able to just lay the sheeting up on the table, put the door on top, and then trace out the outside size of the door as well as the window and pet door openings. Before I put on the outer sheeting, I wanted to insulate the door as much as possible, so I filled up all the gaps with a hard foam board. There wasn't much that we could get in there, mostly at the base. Uh, the frame takes up a lot of the space in the door, but we insulated it as best we could. Once the insulating was done, I applied several beads of construction adhesive all around the perimeter and around the frame in general, and then put on the exterior sheeting. I pressed it down firmly, just by hand, all the way around, and then used screws to attach it. I'm using those same broad, flat-headed cabinet screws to make the connection. I really like how these work. You screw them in, and it doesn't want to distort the material as it tightens it up. As far as the choice of materials for this door, it's less than ideal, I will admit, but we're reusing something that we already had and was basically free, so we've just decided to try to make it work. I did buy this piece of hardboard to finish the outer layer or kind of the other side of the door. It wasn't finished on both sides originally, and it's probably not rated for outdoor use. Actually, I'm sure it's not, but we'll put a coat of paint on it, and I think it'll be fine. The door frame that I'm fitting this door to is a little non-standard. It's about an inch wider than the standard 36-inch door frame, and so this door is custom fit. It's a little bit bigger than the standard. Well, the door is almost ready to paint, I'm just going to do some final sanding here, and I'm starting to paint now, but what we didn't get any video of is the ceiling that I did. I did seal it before we painted it, and I used shellac to do that. Shellac is a fun product that I like to use. It dries quickly, it seals the wood, it has some water resistance, and it's a really good bonding agent. It'll bond almost any two finishes together. The paint we're using is the same paint that he used on the eaves. It's an exterior latex. 
The front door will serve a dual purpose as another exterior window, and so we wanted to put the biggest window in this door that we could fit, and we ended up being able to fit a 24 by 48 inch window in, so it's a pretty good sized window, and that plus the pet door take up most of the door. I've now flipped the door over and I'm ready to paint the other side, and I'm just giving that shellac a quick sanding before I apply the paint. I'm just finishing up the first coat on this side. We did end up going with two coats on the door to make sure it lasts. And I think I'll wait to install the window and the pet door until the door is actually hung. The last thing that we needed to do before installing the front door is to pour the concrete slab out front. We've decided to pour about a four foot by four foot concrete slab in front of the front door. Just makes it so much nicer to have something good and solid that you can put down a front door mat and wipe your feet on before you go inside. One thing nice about this is this will be a very low cost project. We already have some Portland cement uh, that we bought left over from the rest of the build and it'll only take a few bags and then the sand and stone are essentially free. We just have to gather them up. This project has the feel of a fun little project. You know, it's a small pour. I feel like this will go quickly. We can get this done fast. And for some reason, I really like front porches. They just, they add a lot to the home and they're easy to do. I think it'll work best to get the mixer right up next to the forms and we should be able to just tip the mixer back over and use a ramp to get it right into the form that way we won't have to haul the concrete in buckets. I'm working on the mixing side and Kyle is doing the spreading. This time he's being careful not to crawl around in it and trying to keep it off his skins to avoid any chemical burns. The gravel that we're using is a little unusual, probably wouldn't be our first choice, but it's free, so it's perfect and we're using it, but it's really small gravel, and so it makes the working process or the finishing process of the concrete a little more difficult, or at least that's my experience. It's kind of difficult to get out of the mixer. We have to scrape it out by hand after every batch. It's also a little bit more difficult to finish in that it's hard to make the rocks settle. They're so fine and there's already so many of them in there that it's difficult to push the rock down and get the cream to come to the top so you can get a really smooth finish. But with a lot of effort, we got a completely acceptable finish and we're glad to have that done and move on to the next step. Well, we're almost ready to install the front door finally, but first I need to make all the door stops and trim pieces for around the window. And I'll be making those from scratch and just from old 2x4 scraps that we had left over from the building process. Fortunately, I have a planer, so that makes it easy. I used a table saw to get the boards close to the right size and then used the planer to get them to finish thickness. Once these pieces were dimensioned, the next step was to move to the routering. I need to cut a groove or a notch in all of the pieces. The doorstop needs a little groove for the foam to fit into, and the piece that goes, the trim piece that goes around the window will also need a step so that it fits nicely and covers the window edge. I think the thing that took the longest here was getting the router set up. It took a while to get the right router bit. I actually kind of had to build one with some different bearings and spacers and everything to get it to cut exactly the right depth and size of notch. And then I had to get the depth set on my router. But once that was all done, it was just a matter of clamping the piece to my workbench here and routering it out. I would just route up to and around the clamps and then I would move the clamps and get the spot that I wasn't able to get because the clamps were in the way. This is the fun part, the actual routering, and it goes fast. And here's a little clip of the sanding process. This actually took quite a bit of time, but I needed to go over and sand all of the surfaces. I also used the sander to put on the chamfers or bevels so that it all looks nice.
Well, the days finally arrived to install the front door. When we got up there, Kyle was working on installing a booster for his cell phone, so I decided to give him a hand with that. Just needed a little bit more support. We're attaching it to the eaves and the fascia. One thing that we have discovered about this type of house is with these 18 inch thick earthen walls and the metal roof, it blocks almost all cell phone reception. The cell phone just doesn't really get through these thick walls and so a booster is quite necessary. But with a good booster, it works fine. We're even able to use our cell phone for our data service. And as you can see here, we still need to tighten up the install on that wire and touch up the paint on the eaves. After that, we're ready to get started on the front door install. We started off by installing the bottom seal and drip edge and then tested the fit in the front door opening. Unfortunately, it was a little wide, didn't fit quite right, so I had to break out the electric hand planer and trim down the edges a little bit to get it to fit. And now I've finished all my test fits. I'm quite certain it'll fit now, so I'm just sanding it up before we actually do the install. And now we're bringing it over and getting ready to actually hang the door. This is something that I look forward to. Once we get to this part, it gets a little more enjoyable. Actually, the most difficult part for me is getting it to fit in the frame properly. And once you have all your clearances right and it's fitting good, then it gets to a little bit more enjoyable part of the process. Now we're situating it in place and propping up the base to get it exactly the right height and then screwing in the hinges. Here we've got all that, we're just testing the swing, making sure that all looks really good, and then putting in the rest of the screws to, to complete hanging the door. Once the door is hung and swinging properly, the next thing is to install the weather stripping and the door stop. I'm starting with the top piece first, and so I've cut the board to the right width, and now I'm cutting the weather stripping to the right size as well. This part can be a little bit tricky trying to hold the weather stripping in the groove and keep it from slipping out as you're holding this in place and making sure it's in exactly the right location. I have Kyle on the other side holding the door in the proper position and once everything is in place I have to really carefully hold it and then staple it real quick without anything moving. It always amazes me how big of a project installing a front door is especially when you're doing all the trim and everything yourself. Basically I schedule a full day for it and it always takes all day. I also bring up just about every tool I own. This time I loaded up my truck completely full of tools and had to go back three or four times at least in order to get tools that I had forgot or things that I didn't think I would need but I ended up needing. So it's always quite the process but it is very satisfying and as we finish up this door installation I'm really pleased how it's coming along. Well, we're in the home stretch here. We've already got the doorknob installed, the threshold in place, the window, and the pet door installed. And now I'm just finishing up trim around the window inside and out. And Kyle is now performing the ceremonial removal of the stickers from the windows. It's really looking nice. I just have a few more pieces of trim to put around the inside, and we almost have this thing finished up. It's been a long day, but it really looks nice. There's something about getting the front door installed and having it work really nice. It just looks so much more finished. It really feels more like a finished home. I feel like we've crossed a major threshold or milestone in the completion of this house and it really feels good. Next week we'll be finishing up the whitewash, putting the top layer on those earthen floors, and getting the home completely dried in.